a minute. No, it's not time for children's church. <clears throat> it's getting close, Audrey. Just hang on, girl. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me this morning. Now, that's the song that they ordinarily go out to for children's church. But that's going to come in a little bit. But we're going to, we're going to sing the first, the second, and last verses. Jesus loves me. Is that
next song. Next song is our offertory. And uh, I, again, I thank you all for, there are some that are not here this morning and have not been here, but they've been very faithful in sending in their tithes, their offerings, and, and I thank you for that. And, and uh, also for those of you that are here, thank you uh, for bringing your offerings as you come. So we're going to stand, we'll sing this, uh, Oh How I Love Jesus. <clears> oh <throat> Thank you. 
Joanne. Isn't it good to see Joanne? Amen. With the broken leg. Well, we have uh, you take your Bibles open to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're it's a very familiar passage of Scripture, but, uh, you know, with everything that's going on in our world right now, let me, uh, let me turn this on. Sam said he had me, so if you can't hear me, uh, wave your hand. Can you hear me? Brother Zoy, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, quit it. <laughs> he went like this. Uh... This morning, I mean, you know, with everything that's going on in our world today, right now, things are things are really struggling. People are struggling. I mean, you know, we uh, it, it's it's just a it's just a trying time all the way around. My question is: is well, who's in control? Hmm. Huh? Brother Joseph said God. Yeah, well, I, I'm kind of going to agree that. And now over the next three weeks, I'm going to do just a, a very short series on, on the Lordship of, of, uh, of Christ. And uh, this morning, I'm going to, I'm going to set the, the, the groundwork for it, if you will. But this is, this is something that I want you to understand, that if we don't believe that Jesus is God... He's Lord, He's King, He's Sovereign, and we don't believe. So you and I have a we have some we have some things that that have to be dealt with at this time. And so this morning, I, I just want us to I want us to begin that you know and 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 I believe that the the salvation and lordship uh, in, in our lives can't be separated. You can't say, "Hey, listen, I'm 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 saved," but Jesus, if Jesus is not Lord in your life, then there's something wrong. Yeah. Okay. I it's you you've got to you've got to 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 understand that if if uh, we've got to first of all, let's read. I want to read, and I'm going to let you sit down because I'm going to read those first eleven verses of, of chapter two. He says, if therefore there is an encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each one of you regard one another as more important than himself. Wow. Wait a minute. Did that say that actually? Let each one of you regard one another as more important than himself. Would that not change 2020? Yeah. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ, who although he existed, in the form of God that did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men and being found in an appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is, is, is Lord and, and to the glory of God the Father. Now there was, there was something that I didn't say in there when, when I said that. Every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. 
There's going to come a time, folks, when there's not going to be any argument anywhere. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So this morning, I want us to, to look at the Lordship of Christ. And as I, as, as I said, we have to come to grips with the fact that, that Jesus, first of all, is God. Now, you know, we say, well, we talk about the Trinity. Well, yes, He's part of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. And we know that. But one doctrine that's supported through the Scriptures that Jesus is God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says that a child would be born and His name would be Mighty God. And, and Matthew recorded the appearance of the angel to Joseph. And the angel told Joseph that a son would be born to Mary in fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. And, and his name would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And John recorded it differently, though, in the, in the, he said that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word, uh, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's God. He's God. Now, Paul said in our past passage here that, that He existed in the form of God, but He did not regard that equality with God a thing to be grasped or to be held on, held on to. Jesus is God. Okay? We look around in our world today, folks, and I, there's people that have, they, they say, hey, listen, I believe in God, but this Jesus thing is not, not working for me. I'm telling you, if you say you believe in God, but you don't believe in Jesus, then you don't believe in God. And we need to understand that, that it, it is that way. So, so Jesus is God, okay? Now, we've got that settled. But what about this? If, 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 if He's God, He is Lord. I, the word kurios is the word for the Lord and that's used most often, in, uh, most often in reference for Christ in the Greek. And when angels announced the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, they said, Today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. After Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, He said, You call me teacher and Lord? You say, Well, because I am. And, and when the apostles were proclaiming Christ, they proclaimed Him as the, the Lord and the Christ, the Messiah. And, and then Paul said here in verse 11, he said that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, Jesus is God, but Jesus is Lord. Now, this means that Jesus must have complete control over our lives. I'm not upset. <laughs> At all. I, I'm telling you this. Jesus is Lord. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I, I, hey, listen. We, we live in the 20th, 21st century. We're going, to find, we're going to find stuff happening like that in church all the time. But does that change the fact that Jesus is Lord? No. That couldn't have happened at a better time. <laughs> I think God's just, I He's just Lord of all. But, I, you know, I, I, I just, you know, he, the, Jesus is complete control of our lives. And we've got, we need that power and that authority in, a, in our lives. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate you doing that for us this morning. You know, submission to the Lordship of Jesus is part of the invitation that we have to, to salvation. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, folks, I, I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's a part, a part of our in, in, invitation to salvation. You want to be saved? Believe that Jesus is Lord. You've got to believe that Jesus is Lord. John, John MacArthur said, forsaking oneself for Christ's sake 
is not an optional step of discipleship subsequent to, to conversion. It is the essential element of saving faith. So, forsaking oneself for Christ's sake is the essential element of saving faith. You don't, you don't forsake yourself, you can't be saved. It's, it's just not going to be, it's not, not going to happen. Our service comes out of the realization and acceptance that Jesus is Lord in our lives. Lord. As Lord, He's King. Think about it. Think about it. Because of Jesus' obedience unto death, God has highly exalted Him and giving Him the name that is above every name. There in verse 9. And in the first century, you know, there were some, there were some of those Roman leaders, uh, Caligula and, and, and Nero, they pictured themselves as gods on, on the coins. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Vespian said, as, as, as Vespian lay dying, he said, alas, I am surely becoming a god. Now you think about that. You think that's pretty sad. But the Domitian, in the latter part of the first century, when he, when he commanded that, he commanded his people, he said, you refer to me as our Lord and God. Christians, people are, are uh, you know, people are calling us to, to turn away from God. People are calling us to denounce Christ as God in our lives, as Lord in our lives. And, and we, need to, we need to understand that, that the, the title for the, as king in our lives is, is, uh, is, is, is only due to, to Christ. The, the kingship of Christ was predicted in the Old Testament in the, in the Psalms, in the New Testament. As well, he came as a king in Matthew chapter two. He was rejected and died as a king, and and he's the king of all priests in Hebrews chapter five verse six, and 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 he will reign forever as king in our lives. Look at the Revelation eleven fifteen, and as king, Jesus is the one who one who rules both now and forever. The Jews were the Jews were looking for an earthly kingdom, but Jesus later said to Pilate. My kingdom is not of this world, right? right? He's king, but it's not of this world. And and Jesus came to be a king in our hearts and our souls. He came to write the new covenant on the hearts of, of mankind. And and this as the seal uh, of King Jesus is placed in our hearts, he he must. I I got to say this just exactly right. He must be given full and complete authority. Yeah. Full and complete. Our world needs Jesus now. I'm, I'm not going to say more than ever. But man, we really need Jesus now Amen. in our world. Domitian. I mean, he, he sent some of his family away into exile because they wouldn't proclaim him as being uh, as the Lord and, and, and King, Lord and, and God. I mean, he, he, they, they just, they wouldn't do it. But I want you to know something. God has given Jesus a name which is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. He is the Lord. He is King. But I want to get that, and I'm, I'm not taking a long time this morning because I, I'm telling you, folks, if you don't if you don't believe that Jesus is, is who Jesus is, then you got to you got you got to get something right in your life. But here's the one thing that I think is extremely important. That is this: Jesus is sovereign. Yeah. Yes. Sovereign. He is that, that one, uh, but he, he, he is the one that there is no one beside him. There is no other name 
given among men whereby we must be saved. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus. And, and, uh, and Jesus, Jesus said, said himself in John chapter 14, verse 6. It, when, when he said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's sovereign in, in, in that respect. It's only through Jesus that we can find forgiveness of sin. Because of it, His death, His burial, and resurrection, we can have life because He, he rules over death. He is sovereign. When Peter gave his confession at, at, at Caesarea Philippi, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The definite... This definite article, you, thou art the Christ. He was saying there is the one, the only. There is no other. There is no other. And men have set themselves up as su supreme beings all down through the, the centuries. Rulers of, uh, of Rome tried to do it, but we've had others that have said, you know, I'm, I'm, I, they're, they're the supreme authority. And, and I, I think that, uh, you know, we, we just have to, to see that, like he said there in verses, verses 10 and 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That pretty much takes it all in. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's nobody going to not know that God, that Jesus is sovereign in, in, in his reign. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue confess that he is that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. So he's God. He, we know he's God. He's part of the Trinity. But he's, he's, he's Lord. He's King. He's Sovereign. And as I was looking at this and I was thinking about this, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that he, he is Lord. He is King. He is Sovereign. My question is, am I living like it? And you say, well, wait a minute, preacher. True. Yeah, well... But am I? But I'm going to ask that myself, Michael, me, but what about you? Are you living? That Jesus is not only God, but He is Lord, that He is King, that He is sovereign? Over everything in your life, is Jesus the one that's calling the shots? It, do you look into the Word of God to find out what you need to do? The direction that you need to go? The path that you need to take? Are you allowing Him to direct your path? Now, folks, I'm not, I'm not trying to make anybody question. What I'm saying is, is this. I totally and completely believe that 2020 is a time when God's people have got to stand up and be God's people, but they're not going to stand up and be God's people until they totally, totally believe that not only is Jesus God and one with the Father and Holy Spirit, but that He is Lord and that He is King and that He is Sovereign. Far too long that we, we've said if... if if you only believe, you can be saved. And, and in reality, that's, that's just half the truth. Because the truth is, is you've got to believe that God has raised Him from the dead and then confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you're going to live like Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Confession entails a continual... Uh, 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 acknowledgement uh, of Jesus as, as being Lord just as, as, uh, as belief uh, entails a continual believing in, the, in, in His resurrection. 
The truth of the matter is, is I totally believe that the, the day of easy believism is past. Mm -hmm. It was pretty easy when, I mean, I mean, I know there's always been tough times. Don't get me wrong. But when I was a kid, there were four churches in Waukegan, Oklahoma. Baptist Church, Methodist Church, Christian Church, and the Catholic Church. That's it. But every Sunday, they were packed. Every Sunday. Why? In the late 50s, that's just what people did. They went to church on Sunday. I mean, you know, that it's just the way it was. But that was e easy believism. I mean, I went to church on Sunday, so I'm good. I know I say that a lot. I'm not good just because I come to church on Sunday. And I'm, I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. I'm just saying, neither are you. Don't know why did you smile. Uh, it's just not the way it is. Folks, I want you to understand. We, this is a, in this world today, it, it, you know, I believe that Jesus is God. I believe He's my Savior. But I also believe that I can live however I want to live and it's going to be alright because He loves me. <laughs> <clears throat> I, my, my question this morning is this to, to each one of you and, and everyone that's, that's living. Who is Jesus to you? Is He God? Is He Lord? I mean, is He, is he the one that's calling the shots? Is He the King in your life? But let's just get right down to the real nitty gritty. Is he sovereign? The one and the only in your life. Now I'm not going to say that you're never going to make a mistake. I'm not going to ever say that there's going to be a problem. Because there's going to be there's going to be times when we're going to act like Peter. And there's going to be times where we're going to be like Paul before his encounter with Christ. Even though he felt like he was following God's will at the time. But there has to be a point, folks. When we say not only to ourselves, but to the world. Jesus is one with the Father. He is Lord of my life. He is the King of kings. And He is sovereign in me. So my question, who's Jesus to you? The Bible says He's God, that He's King, that He's Lord, that He's sovereign. My heart tells me that, he, that He's God, that He's Lord, He's King, and He's Sovereign. But who do you say that He is? This afternoon, when you encounter somebody, I don't know who it's going to be. might be somebody in the drive-thru. Could be somebody in a restaurant if you go to eat at the restaurant. <coughs> Could be a family member. I don't know who it's going to be, but when you encounter him, who's Jesus to you? Oh. If 
Bible also says that the demons also believe. I just want to know. I want to know where you stand. Where you stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation here in just a moment. As we do, I want you to I want you to hear these words. Okay? I want you to understand that, that these words are going to have something to say. Not only to you, but to all those that that are, are going to hear these words today. But folks, it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to be Jesus Christ's church in our world. Father, this morning we come. And Father, I, I pray. I pray, Father, that we make decisions. Decisions, Father, that are based upon your will and your way. And Father, that we would understand that this is not just a that this is not just a matter that we need to decide right here this morning and so that we can leave and, and go eat lunch. Father, this is a decision that we need to make right here this morning so that we can go forth and live the life that you've called us to live. I pray, Father, today that if there's someone here that has never trusted you, not only as their, their God, but as their Lord and Savior, and as making you king of their life and being sovereign over all in their life, I pray, Father, the day that they would come. I do pray, Father, for those. Uh, Father, we have, we have some that, that, that are listening at home. Father, others are, are, are going to be listening. I don't know where everybody stands. I don't know what everybody else is, what decision everybody else needs to make. But this one thing that I do know, everyone needs to walk away from this time and this message saying, I know exactly who Jesus is. He is my God. He is my Lord. He is my King. And He's sovereign over my salvation. Lord, let that be the decision that we need to, that we make today. 